I'm uh, Dr. Sean Gibbons, uh, and I'm here to tell you about the microbiome and why it matters. So, what is the microbiome? Well, I hate to break it to you, but you're absolutely coated in tiny microscopic creatures that you can't see with your eyes. Uh, they're in your gut, they're on your skin, they're all over the place, and they form these complex ecosystems in your body. Now, that sounds kind of scary, uh, but in reality, it's really, really good for you. If you didn't have these organisms in, in and on your bodies, you'd, you'd be sick. A disease could happen. Um, and indeed, this, we see this. Um, so let's say a fire burns through your microbiome uh, and destroys the native ecology of all the other species that are there. Um, well, sometimes weeds can get into the system. Uh, and a particular kind of weed that can get into the system is called Clostridioides difficile, or C. diff. Uh, this organism can invade your microbiome cause terrible diarrhea, terrible disease, and sometimes you can't cure it with antibiotics. Doctors cannot treat it. Um, what we can do, though, is what we figured out, is you can take poop from a healthy person and you can inject it up the butt of a sick person, uh, and it resolves their disease. They're cured. It's like an ecosystem transplant. Uh, and so it's just a, a increasing evidence that this intact ecology is super important for maintaining health. Well, um, to a large extent, it's the small molecules that our microorganisms are producing that affects our bodies. Um, so microbes make these small molecules and those small molecules get transferred into our tissues and circulate throughout our entire bodies. Um, it's like the microbes are speaking a language to our bodies, um, but we don't yet know how to translate that language. We don't have a Rosetta Stone uh, for making that translation. Um, so, you know, as we work in our research, we, we are trying to understand how this complex interplay, this complex conversation between microbes in our bodies is influencing our health. Recent work from ISB has shown that you can actually predict the diversity of the ecosystem in the gut using metabolites that are in our bloodstream. You can actually see the ecology of our microbiome through our blood. And this really betrays this intimate connection between what's going on in our poop and what's going on in the rest of our bodies. So, uh, the 20th century was all about treating human beings as a monolith. You know, traditional medicine in that era tried to create one pill for one disease, and everyone takes that same pill and they supposedly have the same exact uh, um, response to that particular intervention. But with the Human Genome Project, we figured out that that's not the case. And furthermore, it's not just the human genome that makes us all unique and different and responding differently to different drugs or different dietary interventions. Um, it's also this thing called the microbiome, this complex ecology that exists in our bodies, especially in our guts, and is responsible for processing the foods that we eat uh, and the metabolites that we feed into it from our own bodies. Um, this microbiome has about 100 times more genes than the human genome contains. So there's a vast metabolic repertoire in our microbiome that modulates how we respond to our environments. Uh, and in order to understand personalized medicine of the 21st century or precision medicine interventions, we need to delve into the functional capacity of the microbiome. Um, what you see here today is essentially an external colon. This is an anaerobic chamber. Inside, you see the conditions similar to what's happening inside of your gut. Uh, really low oxygen, high levels of CO2. And in our incubator here, uh, we, we hold samples at 37 degrees Celsius, which is body, body temperature. What this allows us to do is to make what we're calling poop soup. So we can take a poop sample from your body, we can mix it up into a homogenate, and then we can test various dietary interventions or drugs on that poop soup and ask if I add this component, how quickly is it consumed by your microbiome? And what metabolites does your microbiome produce from that particular input? Uh, and by creating this mapping of how, you, how your specific microbiome responds to specific dietary or, or small molecule interventions, we can begin to understand how to explain heterogeneity across people and to tailor interventions to individual people.